Okay, so today we're going to show that the real part of um, i times z is equal to the negative imaginary part of z for every complex number z. So let's go ahead and start the proof. So first we need to identify z as a complex number. So we'll let z be equal to a plus bi, um, where a and b are uh, real numbers, right? This is the definition of a complex number. So we know z is some complex number because it's in the complex number form. Okay, so the uh, imaginary part of z, okay, so we're going to figure out what the negative imaginary part of z is, right? We know the imaginary part of z is going to be the part with the i, right? So it's going to be the real number that's attached to the i, okay? So we know the imaginary part of z is b. So this implies that if we multiply both of these sides by negative 1, the negative imaginary part of z is going to be negative b. So apparently, um, the real part of i times z is equal to negative b, which is equal to a uh, negative imaginary part of z. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what i times z is. So i times z is going to be i times a plus bi, right? Because we know z is a plus bi. So i times a is ai uh, plus i times uh, bi will be bi squared. And we know uh, bi squared, um, well, i squared is negative 1. So this is equal to um, ai um, minus b, right? Because i squared will be negative 1, and negative 1 times b is negative b. So this means that iz is going to be negative b plus um, ai. So this means that the real part, so the real part of i times z, is going to be the part that doesn't have um, an i attached to the real number. So it's going to be negative b. And look at that. We have, so this implies that the real part of i z, of i times z, is equal to negative b. And negative b is equal to the negative imaginary part of z. So that does give us what we were looking for. This gives us that the real part of i times z is equal to the negative imaginary part of z. And that is the proof.